Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media and in this particular tutorial I'll be showing you how we can selectively color this particular photo, also called a spot coloring, very very popular technique in editing. Now something like this is very easy to do in Photoshop because you have the selection tools that can be done literally in 15 seconds because you have the ability to include or exclude something through the selection techniques, right? But here in Snapseed, uh, it's slightly more challenging, especially for this image. I deliberately wanted to choose an image which is challenging. Now, first of all, I have given you the link to download this image. You'll find that in the description so that you can work along. This is challenging because there's a lot of texture in the image, okay? Uh, especially in the architecture that you uh, see here. That is going to make uh, one of the tools which is actually meant for uh, selective color, it's going to make it slightly tough to use, which is that tool if we go to tools, the usually the go-to tool for this technique is the selective tool, okay? So on the second row, you can see, so if I just, uh, you know, press this. And here, what we can do, for example, what you're going to see here is we just have to place a point, right? That's how the select selective tool works. So if I place a point on the floor, for example, somewhere, and then through the Snapseed's U-point U point, uh, technology, you know, we can kind of get masks like this, this red overlay is just figuring out what is the, uh, what are the pixels which are close to where you exactly placed your uh, point. So anything that is similar to that, it tries to take it within that overlay or the mask. And then, for example, we can go to saturation, saturation here, okay? And we can turn this black and white, can you see? So we can place a couple of points and start doing that, but the problem is not in these big and even surfaces like the floor, okay? The problem will come in areas like show you like for example if I was to zoom in here and let's say we place a point right on top here but there's so much of texture that that U point technology will not work on everything can you see through that overlay you can see it's only taking in the texture but it's not really working on the yellow things so we can actually verify this if you go to saturation turn the saturation down can you see it removes the red from those areas around the yellow parts, but it's not taking the yellow parts. So then you'll need one for the yellow part. And it'll just be too many points, and trust me, it becomes, you know, not so good. So if you don't have an area uh, where everything is plain, usually the technique that I'm going to be showing you will be used, which is very simple, okay? So we're going to basically go over to Tools. We're going to go, we, we are going to turn this image fully black and white. So I'm going to click on the black tap on the black and white option here on the fourth or fifth row. Okay, you'll find it. And now you can see it's completely done. So I'm going to press the check mark down just to make it black and white. And now what we can do is we can apply some masks and selectively work on this image to keep the mong colored. So how do you do that? Okay. On the top, you see the edit stack option, like something with the stack and the arrow, okay? So I'm just gonna tap on that. It's gonna show you, if you click on view edits, it's just gonna show you what all have you done till now to this image, basically. And think of it like layers, how you have it in Photoshop, okay? By the way, I have a very extensive tutorial on Snapseed, like a whole four and a half hour long course. Do check that out if you're interested, okay? The link will be in the description. Uh, but right now, we have just applied one thing, which is the black and white uh, filter on this. Now, if I just tap on this, we have to click on the second option. I keep saying click, but that's tap, okay? So tap on the second option, which is going to open up that uh, mask, uh, the whole masking panel for you, okay? Now, there are two ways to do this. What this panel allows you to do is, it allows you to basically erase the effect of whatever filter or the edit that, you'd have, that you have applied. For example, the black and white edit you have applied, okay? For example, right now, if I was to just... I'm sure, just, you know, move my finger here on that, this architectural part, okay, on the top. You can see it's, wherever now I'm painting, it's basically now revealing that whole effect that we had from the black and white. So think of it like this, the moment we open this panel, it hid the entire effect and wherever you run your finger on, it's going to keep revealing. So one way is this, right, that we can start running our finger everywhere except for the monk. But this can be a bit inefficient. So a better way is, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go hit this down arrow so that I can just, you know, go once. In fact, let me just close this and let, let me just start this again. Okay, so I'm going to press this. So a better way to do it is to first invert this whole thing. Okay, so on the left, you'll find this option which is like a triangle and a circle. If you just hit that, 
down below. It's actually now inverted the whole thing. Okay, so now is the opposite. Wherever you run your finger on, okay, for example, we want to keep the monk colored. So wherever you run your finger on, it's actually going to reveal the unedited part. What was the unedited part? The colored part, because we edited by making it black and white. So now is the opposite. This is much easier because the colored part is much lesser than the other part. So what I can now do is I can now start running my finger here and just keep it on the monk. Now this is of course the challenging part, right? So because you have to be very, very careful when it will come to edges. So you'll have to really, really zoom in. Okay, that's the thing. Now Snapseed allows you to zoom up till a certain extent. So you definitely have to be a bit careful on the edges. Now the best part is even if you do go a bit out, you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world because I'm going to be showing you how that can also be very, very easily corrected. You have complete control over this edit that you're putting to do. Now, I may not be perfect here because my I don't want to make this video unnecessarily longer. The point is uh, just to show you how it's done. Then you can, because these things take a bit of time, but you can see, right, it does a fairly uh, good job. For example, I can do it on the legs also. And right here, of course, I'll have to Zoom in, make sure this is covered. Now that's the that's the problem, right? It's absolutely not going to be, let's say, one hundred percent perfect, you know, uh, with this technique because ultimately you're doing this manually. But the ground part here is not such a problem because if we do make a mistake later on, also if we realize this, remember we can always use the selective tool because the floor, as we saw, was easily, uh, you know, you could work even with the selective tool, right? So you can see here, inside parts are always easy because you're not close to the edge, so you can you know, be quick about them. But I do want to show you what will happen if you do make a mistake. So let's see that. So let's say that I just quickly run it on the face. You can see actually I've been able to do this, even though this is not such a straightforward edit, it's been pretty easy. But let's say, you know, you were not in full control, you're still getting used to Snapseed, and you do something like this. Okay, on the left, you can see now we have ran our finger there and the color has come back. Now, this can be easily corrected by looking at those arrows down below. What does it say? It says right now, zero black and white. That means wherever we are running our finger on, Snapseed is making black and white zero. Making black and white zero equals, that means basically it's coloring. It's doing the opposite because black and white is zero. But we can also say, okay, now if we... Tap on the up icon, we can say wherever we run our finger on black and white 100. That means now if you run your finger over the areas that you accidentally ran on, that means now it's putting the black and, effect, uh, black and white effect there. So zero basically means you're erasing the black and white effect and 100 means you're adding it fully. Somewhere in between means the opacity of what you are doing will be slightly lesser, which is not really uh, required here, okay? And you can then work on the problematic areas by really, really zooming in. Of course, don't make, make sure you again turn black and white to zero. So this can just involve a bit of time, okay? But you can see, it's pretty good. So of course, like I said, I'm not going to be perfect right now. This can involve some time. But right now, if you just see this, I hit the done part, and you can see this works really, really well, okay? So this, and any anytime you need it, slightly more perfection, Okay, and the area is slightly more even, you can now, okay, go back, open up the selective tool, and then work on those areas also. The only problem with selective tool, like I mentioned, is those areas which have a lot of texture. But overall, I think this is looking good, so I hope that you like this tutorial on selective coloring. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and of course, don't forget to check out my very, very detailed Snapseed for Beginners course, where I cover each panel with a lot of detail. Okay, so I'll see you next time. Bye for now.